real life trading family, folks and friends, team and fans from around the world, another special interview. The first one ever on my living room couch. Oh, okay. Number one, <laughs> we're getting cozy. Number two, this is like a dual interview because I know Johnny Guarco has been interviewing people who have served in the military and he's been doing the real life trading military branch of interviews, but also not only are you a military, former, current, but you also are an amazing trader and a great friend of mine. Oh, thank you, I appreciate that. And it's friend month, February, your 50th birthday, your sister's birthday today, today. your birthday yesterday. Yeah. Shout out to Elise. I'm glad you're here, man. And I want be. so many people to know who you are. So just give us a background, man. Who are you? Where's your family? Where were you born and raised? Give us all the goods. Well, quickly, uh, Gregory Gilbert, for folks that know or don't know, uh, originally from Camden, New Jersey, uh, moved to Willingboro, New Jersey. Father went into the Marine Corps, uh, got stationed in Washington, D.C. in 1985. Uh, shortly thereafter, uh, we stayed in that area. I graduated in 89, went off to do my military uh, stint. Uh, didn't do it as long as I wanted to, was injured. Um, so I did about two years, came back to the D.C. area, uh, started my career in um, IT, networking. Um, bounced around from D.C. to Philly, um, back to D.C. and been back in D.C. since 19, no, excuse me, since 2001. Okay. Yeah, so 2001 got back to D.C. and been there ever since. Okay. Yeah. And how did you get interested and in, involved in the IT space? That's a great question. Truthfully, if, um, if you'd have asked me when I got out of high school, if I'd be doing what I'd be doing now, yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah. Okay, so on that pause, what were you going to be doing in high school? Uh, what DJ? I, absolutely. I was going to be doing music somehow, some way, some form, some fashion. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, it, it didn't work out, you know. It, it became a hobby. Um, and then I decided to... So, let me back up a little bit. The reason why I went into the Marine Corps is because I didn't feel like I wanted to go to college. Okay. But uh, when I got into the Marine Corps, I realized I should have went to college. <laughs> <laughs> So this having, <laughs> yeah, it, it is a difference. Now, I, I love the Marine Corps. Um, you know, father kind of raised us in that mentality. So it wasn't anything hard about it. It just gave you a different perspective on life. And I'm glad I did that. Actually, I think every man in America should have some time in the military. Mm. I think it gives you a different perspective on life. Mm. But anyway, with that being said, um, when I got back to DC after getting out of, the, out of the military, I did do a little stint in college down in North Carolina Central. Okay. And um, because I was a disabled veteran, they were able to pay for my school. And when I I did a, a year in North Carolina Central, then came up and did some time in UDC when I got back to DC, um, kind of bouncing around. I didn't come directly back from the core to DC. I went to North Carolina, then got back to DC. Um, so when I got there, I went to school at UDC and then transferred to another smaller school because I became a single father at that time. Um, so I was kind of balancing my life uh, being a young, crazy teen at the end of my teenage years, but now I'm raising a son. And I needed to kind of focus on a school that was centered around a family, more structured life. So I was able to go to a smaller community college there. And they offered a program in 1987 called Cisco. Right at the time, Cisco networking was something new that a lot of people didn't know right. about. Um, one of the people in the guidance counselor off guidance office asked me if I was interested in it. I told him I knew nothing about networking, but it was a pilot program that the government was offering and one of the schools was going to be um, Nova, that they were okay. going to run this test pilot program at. So that's how I got into networking, being a Cisco network engineer. I got certified back in 1999 and kind of been in that field ever since. Um, I went into the field as a transport engineer for Bell Atlantic, did nothing with my Cisco stuff, then went to Quest Communications that moved me to Philly, mm -hmm. um, working with the uh, dark fiber. That was that whole uh, 1999, early 2000s dark fiber yeah. era that was blowing up uh, when the uh, dot com bubble was happening. Uh, got out of there and then came back to DC and started working with some smaller um, uh, DOD contracting companies. And that's, I just stayed in that arena. And uh, yeah. again, it was nothing that I thought I'd be doing, but I absolutely enjoy it wholeheartedly. You like it a lot? Oh, I do. Okay. Especially, uh, and you're good you, know, at when, it? you know, the stuff that you do kind of is changing the world. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's very uh, uh, exciting. Yeah. You know, it made me think about, we've done a lot, man. This is like our like fourth interview like this in a way. Because remember we did the IR4 podcast? Yep, yep, Where we talked yep, about yep, schools yep, yep. and the future of education and... How about that? That was kind of weird to see that COVID happened. We nailed kinda, that. Oh, man. Accidentally? 
I think it was actually who knew COVID would do it. You know, we thought it would be just a a simple a natural migration. Progression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, COVID definitely shined a light on uh, kind of what we thought would happen yeah. with the school system. And I'm gonna link that podcast in the description below if you guys want to watch him and I talk about this years ago. Yeah. You know, we didn't think COVID would happen, but we knew that people are gonna be migrating out of schools, like the physical schools, and yeah. doing something more online because number one, it's easier. And now you have families that are staying at home more and children either can't go or don't want to go or shouldn't go or whatever. And so, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see all that unfold. But Absolutely. how did that impact, you know, your job or your work at all? Or did it? Uh, COVID or the school thing? COVID. Um, well, we're essential personnel. So COVID impacted us, but the where I am in my field, we still have to do what we need to do. Um, so it, it impacted us from the fact that um, we had to come with an interesting way to still perform our duties. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't one of the lucky ones that got to stay home. Well, I'm not going to say lucky. I was blessed to still be able to go into a, uh, a, I was blessed to be able to go into office every day and still work where yeah. some people didn't have that luxury. Yeah, yeah, totally. So why trading, man? What brought oh. the stock market into your life? Because you're avid. Oh, man. You love this stuff. I do. I do. <laughs> I do. I, I highly. So I'm not going to use the word love anymore. Okay. Right? I'm going to use highly enjoy if okay. it's to that point of love. Uh, but that's another conversation about the word love. How I'm trying to uh, redirect some of my vocabulary. Okay. I can respect that. Meaningful vocabulary. But anyway. Yeah, I mean, trading was just something, again, when, when you're in the career that I'm in, you, you're, you're always chasing the new technology. And when you're younger, that's awesome. But as you get older and, you know, um, you're starting to wind down in life, you're starting to look for retirement, uh, trying to chase that technology um, isn't something that I, I'm not as passionate today as I was then. And when you're no longer passionate in your field, then you know it's time for you to uh, kind of bring some mentors, excuse me, some people that you mentor to take the baton from you. Mm -hmm. And with that, you kind of migrate into something else. Now, when I say retire, I'm not ready to just lay back somewhere, right? But I am ready to migrate out of that field and use my brain power in another field, which is then the stock market. So uh, one of the things I heard a long time ago was, you know you're on your way to wealth when you make money when you sleep. Mm, right. Mm. So there was a couple of different opportunities that you run along or that you come across in your in your days. You know, the your, the MLMs, the multi-level marketings. Oh, you did um, some of those? Yeah, oh, yeah. I of did, course. Yeah. Who hasn't? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing against them. You know, they, they definitely serve their purpose. Um, but uh, I want to do the real estate thing. But again, as I was looking toward retirement, if you're just starting out in real estate, that's work also. So a little backstory. So. I brought a couple pieces of property in Baltimore with the uh, uh, areas around the John Hopkins area. And they were offering great incentives for people to come in and, you know, kind of buy up these old dilapidated homes and, and you know, put them back on the market. And they were taking some of the John Hopkins students uh, and doctors and placing them in those areas and giving them incentives to buy those homes. So with that being said, I'm not from Baltimore, I'm close enough to Baltimore, but it became a chore because I don't know any contractors up there. So if I got to hire you, let me speak specific. So when I'm hiring a contractor, I have to take the words that you give me and I can't follow up on that if I'm working all the time. So it be, that became more work. So I'm not going to go into that whole story, but that, that became more work. So now I'm looking again, well, what is it? A way that I can build wealth when I sleep and, and everything always kept coming back to the stock market, mm. the stock market. So have a wonderful young, wonderful older sister. Uh, she's working in the banking industry and a lot of people with interesting professions come through the bank. So I asked my sister about the stock market. She told me about a gentleman that absolutely followed you. Yeah. And um, he told me if I was interested in him mentoring me to watch your videos. So I watched your videos while he was on TDY yeah. and, and just uh, reached out to you that I never think, never thought I would get a response and you responded. And we kind of started our dialogue there. And yep. on a particular day in July of 2018 changed my life because I was called to make a decision, yeah. right? You're either going to do what you said or you're going to make up an excuse not to do what you said you were going to do um, so I decided on that day, you know, when you called me back and you're like, look, if you're serious, you can come out here next week. <laughs> and I was not expecting that call. But uh, yeah, I mean, that day I made a decision, you yeah. know, uh, spoke it up with the family and, and I changed my life on that day. Yeah. yeah. Well, man, you're one of the first people I've ever done that with, by the way. 
I'm, hey, you know, like that I was, changed your life. You then did hundred percent, man, hundred percent. And that's, there's a lot that takes away from that because you have to make a decision that's always gonna be uncomfortable. I was petrified. You know, and that's not only in coaching or investing in ourselves, but that's just in life. If you wanna move, if you wanna quit your job, if you wanna retire early, if you wanna build true wealth, if you wanna own things that help you make money while you sleep, all of those things are going to initially be uncomfortable. They're initially gonna be scary. It's the unknown. It is. Yeah. You don't know so much and you came down and yeah, man, you didn't know anything. You didn't know how what a broker was, what candlesticks were. You knew nothing about the market, but you just knew that you wanted to do it. Yeah, I did. What has been your biggest failure or learning lesson as a trader? <sighs> biggest failure in learning lesson. Instantly, the thing that comes to mind was not following my plan. Okay. You know, not, not following the plan that was laid out. And when trading, you have to have a plan and you have to be disciplined, right? As you say, and you tell other people, um, I can give you the, the A, B, C, D to success. But if you don't utilize it, then what is having that information? Mm -hmm. So um, the gift and the curse was the Tesla trade. You know, mm -hmm. came home, uh, literally made first trade $1,500 in four minutes. Oh, who needs a freaking trading plan? You know, <laughs> you don't need a trading plan. But then again, market wake up. Yeah. Week after, lose double that mm -hmm. by not being disciplined and following the plan. So that was a uh, um, a lesson learned and so, in, in a wake up call. So that that was one of mine. Yeah, yeah. So not having just not having a plan or not not having, sticking to the not plan. sticking to the plan. Yeah, that's a big one. What was your biggest revelation or aha moment as a trader? I can do this. Yeah. I can do this. Yeah. So tell me more about that. Like when you say I can do that, there was a certain so I had, I relied so much on you, you know, yeah. that, that, that again, coming to you very ignorant to the market, knew nothing about it. Right. Having that, that personal one-on-one -on -one training session with you. And again, I, I told you, I said, when I come out there, I want to do what you do. If you get up at eight and you go to the bathroom, I'm getting up at eight and I'm going to the bathroom. I wanted to mimic everything that you did. Right. Yeah. So one thing that got me where I'm, where I'm at in my career is I found the people that were the top dogs at that. I rode their coattail, right? And I'll tell them every day, you know, I like to find the people that are doing, I like to find the people that are successful at what I want to do. And I want to mimic what they do mm -hmm. and, and not being ashamed about it. So the aha moment went from, again, having you being in uh, accessible in my ear, that's easy, right? Anybody can, can I'm not going to say that because then that might be um, downplaying other people's thoughts or, or energy, but you can always have someone that you coach that that you look forward for that inspiration and that they're there and they're close. But what happens when that person's not there? Mm -hmm. You know, are you able to still succeed? So when I was able to kind of pick myself up after the Tesla trades and say, all right, let me follow my plan. Let me be disciplined about my plans and let me look at holistically what I've learned and kind of remove you out of the picture. Never totally, obviously. Um, and then when you have those consistent trades then you start to say you know what i can do this it's not as hard as as it was made out to seem right it's mm. not as difficult as they want to portray it to be i can do this and so many other people can do it also and that's again one of the things that i wanted to do is let people know that it, look if i can do it anybody can do it that's the truth yeah <laughs> same so with that, me that was my aha uh -huh, like oh my goodness yeah. i can really do this i mean we're the two dumbest people in the whole company I yeah. wouldn't say that, but <laughs> <laughs> speak for yourself. <laughs> but Whoa, yeah, 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 But yeah, yeah, if we can do it, it's like, come on, guys. Like, it's, it's going to be challenging. There's going to be losses. There's going to be fears. What is your biggest fear as it relates to the stock market? My biggest fear? Yeah. Um, my biggest fear related to the stock market is that it uh, sounds crazy. Sounds counterproductive. Being successful is my biggest fear because there's so many things... There's so many things that go along with success that, you, that sometimes can scare you away from success. So my mm. thing was, what happens if I'm successful? What happens mm. if, if all of these goals that I set out to make, I achieve? With that, it's, well, if you get successful, then how many people are going to be coming to you, asking you for advice, right? And then the scary part of that, excuse me, the great part of that is, is it feels like you are doing something. The scary part of that is, is you don't want to steer someone wrong, right? So that is one of my biggest fears is being successful because with success comes 
responsibilities, right? And, wow. and I want to make sure that um, I'm pouring back into people the, the things that were poured into me to be successful. And that scary thing that at some time I may not be able to do that. So that's Steve. a mental fear yeah. um, that, I'm, that I'm struggling with every day. And I don't think that I'll ever stop struggling with that. And, yeah. and to me, I think that's a good thing because when you get comfortable is when you stop growing. So if I'm uncomfortable with that, then I'm always going to know that at least I'm going to do my best to provide content, valuable content to people when seeked. Where'd you get that mental motivation from? I mean, the, the ability to sit down and meditate and have that introspection, like it had to come somewhere. I mean, calling me on the phone and saying, I want to do coaching or even learning the stock market. Like at what point was it a book, a video, a webinar, a person you met that was just, that gave you this type of thirst? Oh man. Um, so it's, it's a multitude of things. So for one, uh, being a former Marine, you know, when you go through that training, you have to be, a in my opinion, you have to be a special type of person to want to join Marines and to be able to make it through the training, right? So that's always going to uh, want you to be thirsty and hungry and also do your best at anything. Um, secondly, with that is, yeah, the people around me give me that, that desire to want to learn. You know, I have, a, I have a great family. Everyone has a great family. I think everyone would say that. Yeah. Even if they don't believe it. Yeah. But <laughs> I have a great family, a great support system, um, very intelligent sister and brother, and I want to um, make them proud. So in making them proud gives me that desire and that energy to keep trying to find that next level, you know, getting to that next point of success, whatever that might be. You know, if it is mental, if it's spiritual, if it's... Um, um, emotional, you know, all of those things I think come from the people that you put around you. And I've always wanted to make people proud. And ironically, you know, you spoke about it being my uh, birthday yesterday. One of the things I wanted to have, so I wanted to make my 50th special, right? As anyone would. Mm -hmm. So it was either going to be something, what I really had planned is all of the people that were special in my life over these 50 years, right? So for your birthday, normally your birthdays, you celebrate yourself. My 50th, I wanted to do something s different. I wanted to celebrate all of the people that helped me become the person I am today. So it wasn't going to be about me. It was going to be about me, like you were saying, sharing those different things that I've taken from all of these people that I've met over my life and I've put them into me, you know, whether it was someone that may not have been the nicest person, but it was a certain quality that I might need from that person to be in a spe specific situation. Yeah, right? I have friends like that. Yeah, yeah so, you know, that's what it is. It's just taking something from everybody else and putting it in me to help me become a better person. Mm. And that's what allows me to um, keep going. I hope that answers your question. Does, I, I got kind of long-winded. No, but. it does. It's, it's, it's amazing to me that you had that answer that success is something that you're afraid of because I don't think many people would admit that out loud because it sounds insane. It does. It sounds like you're a crazy person. Like, wait a minute, don't you want money? Don't you want fame, success? I mean, like, of course you do, but if you don't have it, that means you're afraid of it somehow. Simple as that. Like yeah. if you haven't done something, it's because you're afraid. And you might say like, oh, well, no, because I haven't like been down there on that island to go do that thing. You know, like if it's, let's say you want to go scuba diving in Aruba. You're like, well, I've never been, so how can I be afraid of it? I'm like, oh, exactly. If you were not afraid of it, you would have bought the, bought the ticket, gone to Aruba and gone skydiving or, sky scuba or scuba, scuba diving. Yeah, yeah. So there has to be some type of fear. And I think that's beautiful, man, that you realize that because that's one of my biggest fears too. I mean, it, it always has been, is becoming successful and then letting people down on that journey. Or as you become successful, some people who were there at the beginning, you're gonna separate yourself from because they're not gonna come with you. And then there creates that animosity potentially or that judgment or that scarcity mindset that there's not enough or that they just start separating their love. And so it's easier to keep their love, then separate from that love. And therefore it's just don't obtain, don't go after, don't try to strive for that success. We kind of, on the on the down low, self-sabotage ourselves, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, if we don't want the money, it's, you know, could it be because we feel like we really don't deserve the money. Mm -hmm. So therefore we don't strive to get mm -hmm. no. whatever, whatever, whatever money is, whatever that goal is. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. So what are some goals for you in the next five years? Um, well, next one is to be retired within the next five years. That's okay. my main goal. Um, I want to continue and try to teach 
spread the RLT gospel and get a lot of people into trading, uh, debunk some of the myths around the trading. Um, just help out more people. I want to, I want to develop a program to where they're teaching trading to some of these children, you know, yeah. not children, the youth, right? Let yeah. them know about, about the market. Because again, we spoke about the way that this world is changing, you know? And uh, the one thing that seems to be current is there's always going to be the stock market around. Yeah. So, you know, that provides opportunity out there that a lot of people aren't aware of. And I yeah. want to help spread that knowledge and let make people aware of, you know, you don't have to do X, Y, and Z anymore. You know, there are these other opportunities um, that we didn't have, you mm -hmm. know, that I was totally ignorant to growing up. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing I want to uh, let's start within the next five years in, in the future. I want to start that now. And I think I'm, I'm, I'm doing that now kind of slowly. Um, goal is also to spend more time with my granddaughter. Right, that that's a goal. Um, I ain't figured out how I'm gonna make that happen yet. Yeah, but yeah. It, it's it's on the books. Yep. Um, and man, that's a great question. But I, I really don't have too much other than right now. I'm just focusing on trying to retire soon so I can do some other things. And yeah. I don't know what those other things are yet. Right, right. But that's what's beautiful about retirement is once it opens up, it opens up the door to tons of free time tons of opportunities that you don't have, you don't have to go to work at these certain times of the day and you can more or less do whatever you want yeah. to some degree to create that freedom. I mean, there's so many people that I work with, that we work with, that's their goal is retirement because they have a job and they're in a job and like it or not, there's a lot of time component there. One of my favorite quotes recently is, rich people have money, wealthy people have time. Mm. So having the time to do whatever you want, wherever you want from anywhere in the world, that's something that stocks and trading actively allows you to do because it doesn't require as much time as a lot of people think. It doesn't require as much knowledge as a lot of people think. It doesn't require as much money as people think. It requires all aspects of those, but generally not as much as people initially think it does. Yeah, I agree with you there. Yeah. yeah. How much did you start trading with? Uh, instantly? Yeah. A uh, $40,000 account. Okay. Yeah. And so how'd that go? Uh, <laughs> I think it kind of went like every yeah, like the average person yeah, does. Uh, yeah. A little bit of this. A little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I I I and I guess that term is relative when people say blow their account up, right? Yeah. So I did have a a monetary figure in my mind that if my account ever got below this, then hey, maybe this wasn't the thing for me to do. <laughs> uh, I, I reached it. I was close. Yeah. I was close and I had to say, so I never, I never reached that dollar amount, right? So as if I ever got down to $20,000, you know, then, Hey, this, this isn't for me to do, yeah. but I did reach the, the, um, the, the limit for day trading. Okay. I hit that twice when I had to fund my account, yep. but I only funded it a thousand dollars. Right. But uh, ever since then I've been, uh, I've been pretty successful. Yeah. But, uh, that was that, that's that, that's that cost of learning. Yeah, you know, that's, absolutely. that's the cost of learning. Yeah, absolutely. So, that's huge, man. And again, I mean, what's what's a, what's beautiful about that is I think over time, everyone has access to that amount of money where you can go, all right, I have that at some point. Savings or retirement or 401k IRA, like it's probably somewhere. Yeah. But that amount of money, I mean, can eventually grow to something quite substantial and can really start changing your life pretty dramatically. Because not only that, but it also gives you the confidence, like as you mentioned earlier, to believe that you can. Mm -hmm. Because you've done something that I'm gonna tell the whole world about forever, but something that no one will ever be able to take away from you is you hit a trade that had a 6,000% return. It's a big deal, man. It is, it is, it it's is. It's a big deal. I try right? not to think about it, you know, too it, much. But you have to, you have to. Because not only, I mean, you, the, the stock is NEO. You bought it at $1.50. It's like 62 bucks right now. Yeah. Massive. Yeah, a little bit, a little you bit. You say don't break your arm patting yourself on the back, <laughs> convict. <laughs> it's a big deal. Yeah. That's really, really cool. And, but you believe in the company, you did the research and yeah, obviously it worked, like that's cool. But there's a lot of people who didn't buy Neo at that price, a lot of people. But having the ability to know that we have access to that because that's gonna happen again to someone else. They'll be able to buy a company le that's not very expensive. And that can grow pretty substantially, that, that investment, that trade. And being able to see that type of P&L can just change your whole mindset oh, about what's possible. It does, it does. You know, and again, you know, 
like you said, coming into it ignorant and then to see that growth, you know, but again, you know, it took the time. It took the, the commitment, you know, um, I knew Tesla was a big one. So I was just doing the, would you say the sympathy play, mm -hmm. you know, on, on that particular stock and it, and it happened to work out. So, yeah. yeah, but that's the knowledge, right? That's something that you have to obtain over. You knew how to press the buttons. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah, you went it. in and like you, you press the buttons and you bought it. Yeah. But knowing that we can do that as traders is a massive, massive ordeal because it doesn't matter your skin color, your age, how much money you got, where you're born. We all have access to this machine, this opportunity. And we talk about making money while you sleep. I mean, when you're investing money into a company, like that's what you're doing. When you're investing and in buying a stock, you're literally investing in something that is working on taking that money from you and maybe hiring an employee or whatever and creating cash flow with your money while you sleep to build that up for you. Oh yeah. It's a big deal. I think so. Yeah. What do you think is going to be able to help certain people, community, places learn this in a faster, quicker way? So one thing that I, I think about is so there can't be a one training program that fits all, right? Because people learn totally. different. People learn differently, totally. right? So it's trying to speak to pe people to, at their frequency. Okay. So I can't. I don't know what it's going to take to actually achieve all that. So I'm just going to try to do my little piece. I love it. Right. And hopefully my little piece can then plant a seed and grow into something else, which I think it's doing right. Mm -hmm. Because uh, again, when I sat with you two years ago and then you challenged me to do my videos, you know, year before last, that's kind of grown. And that was a scary piece. So to answer your question, um, I'm just trying to make the videos and address people that are like me with the knowledge that I think I have and let them know that you can do this. And last year I kind of started off kind of gung ho with it and just all over the place. Yeah. You know, this year I'm trying to uh, find a niche market and just focus on first, just talking to people that are interested in wanting to know the market, right? Um, secondly, if I can understand where you're coming from, then I can speak to you on your frequency and help you get to where mm -hmm. you want to go. Mm. So again, I'm trying to do that with my Facebook posts, with some of yeah. my Twitter, not Twitter, um, Instagram posts. I'm just trying to build it small that way. And hopefully, you know, I start with the, the friends and family and then the friends and family tell a friend, which has been happening now. Yeah. And I'm trying to spread that piece that way. And hopefully that pays back into um, the, the other people that's coming in, friends and family and friends, telling their friends and family yep. and friends. And what Love I it. ask the people to do, because I'm even mentoring a few folks right now. Love it. Right? That's scary also. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what I ask them to do is, the only thing I ask you to do is the information that I give to you, do your do do your due diligence on it and you share it. That's what I ask folks to Love do. Love it. Yeah. And the thing is we can, everyone who's listening and watching this can replicate that model. Because again, it doesn't matter how old you are, right? It doesn't matter where you live. That's true. It doesn't matter what you look like or what your beer looks like. <laughs> you can tell other people. You can have other people understand this piece of information and they can go spread it. It creates amazing ripple effects. Now, you mentioned a word just a moment ago, frequency. Mm -hmm. Can you tell people what that is? Oh, wow. Okay. Well, frequency. So I believe that um, bodies, humans, flesh, blood, um, your soul is in this body and your body has a, a, a frequency, a vibration, your spirit, right? Mm -hmm. um, I guess an easy way to, to put it is, and I think everyone might be able to understand this, is you, know, you ever go to a room and someone walks in, they don't have to say a word, but you can kind of feel their presence. You know, to me, that's what a frequency is. I think that's how some animals communicate, right? Because they necessarily can't speak verbally, but I think they have something that um, posturing, you know, mm -hmm. body posturing, body, uh, what is it? The the non-verbals, mm -hmm. you know, but with mm -hmm. your body language, share, share things. And I think that's what frequency is with people. You know, you can stand next to someone, not say a word, but you'll know if you feel uncomfortable or relaxed, yeah. right? It's just it's just something about the spirit, the, the spirit of the body, the energy of the spirit, I should say. So yeah. to me, that's what frequency is. But then the other frequency is when I'm talking to people, it goes to, if I explain something to you and I can say A plus B plus C, right? You might get it, but I might need to tell someone A plus B, excuse me, A plus C plus B. 
we just flip the numbers, right? Yeah. But it's the same equation. I see. They just have to hear it differently, oh. right? So when I'm telling people about the candlesticks and I say, tell me the difference between a bullish candle or a bearish candle, you'll have some people that say a bearish or bullish candle closes higher than it opens, right? You'll have someone say a bullish candle opens lower than it closes. Same thing. Same. Just said ver wow. in reverse, right? That's a really good point. Some people hear it differently. You just have to find that frequency and speak on their frequency. I love that. Man. You're going to be amazing at that, dude. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. I got, I got a great coach. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> You're going to be so good at it. You're going to be so good. Because it's about understanding where people are at and, you know, not hitting them over the head with something ex extremely complex sometimes. Yeah. And that comes from a book. So since, you know, I, I would have to say my journey within the last four, four to five years, don't I don't listen to the radio much anymore. It's just I just consume myself with books and knowledge, you know. And then I try to validate the knowledge mm -hmm. that I'm getting from a particular book from another book. What book was that? Do you remember? Uh, Market Makers. Um, I'd have to I'd have to get my thing because okay. yeah, I'd, I'd, it's somewhere. Yeah, it's in there. Yeah. <laughs> my audio book is full. Yeah. My audio yeah. book is full. But uh, yeah, just just reading and getting information and, and then trying to share it. Okay. Right. Love it. So some rapid fire questions. Uh -oh. What are two sectors that you're extremely bullish on? for the next three years? Technology and health. Okay, any type of specific type of technology or any specific type of health? Uh, blockchain and the e-health now, meaning what, the, 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 the virtual doctors. Oh, like Teladoc. Like, like Teladoc. Why are you bullish on Teladoc? Because just within COVID, right? Again, have to go back to COVID, right? There are certain things that happen in our world, in our time that shifts the way, what we used to call normal, right? Mm -hmm. So I think with, what COVID exposed was it's now allowing people to utilize the virtual mm -hmm. and you're kind of teleconferencing to have normalcy, right? Mm -hmm. No one ever wanted to go to it. I'll speak for myself. I never particularly like going to a doctor's office and just sitting there and waiting, right? Really when I just need to have the initial consultation with the doctor. Now, if there's something very serious going on, then yeah, you want to go in and get the hands on, you know, hands feely feely stuff. Um, but other than that, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to make mm. an appointment, have a virtual session with your doctor at, from the comfort of your house, right? That is that is the new norm now. Okay, love right. it. What are three stocks that you're extremely bullish on for the next three years? <laughs> ESPO, it's a gaming um, e ETF, Okay. right? Okay. Little history behind that. My son told me about that. Uh, one of the things he always played a bunch of video games. You said, don't don't get on them for playing video games. Ask them what they're playing, right? Yeah. So I asked him what they're playing. And then that, that spiraled into a conversation about how these kids are being recruited to play video games full time as a pro. You get paid for this? What? Yeah, exactly. What? Parents, listen to this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So that was, that was eye opening. And then, um, you know how they say, uh, Film mirrors life or life mirrors film, something like that. Yeah. Um, I'm watching Ballers, TV show on HBO. No, no plug. Um, it's a good show. It is a good show, yeah. right? Um, there was an episode on there about that. About mm -hmm. one yeah, of, yeah, 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 you know, and it was, it's for real. Yeah, the Dallas, was he an offensive lineman? He was, yeah, exactly, yeah, 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 yep, yep. So that kind of light bulb went off there. Um, so you bought some shares. Uh, did I? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, yes. Uh, son's allowance went up. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Um, uh, the other one is, again, about where this world is going. So okay. I am, um, when we started talking about Bitcoin a while ago, that, yeah. that led me to believe, excuse me, let, that led me to do a deep dive. Well, I understand what Bitcoin is, but what is it really about? So in doing that, and that, that book is The Age of Cryptocurrency. I started reading that book. Oh, wow. Audio book. Okay. That, yeah. Okay. Um, that turned me on to blockchain, right? So yep. Bitcoin was just the first use case of this technology. Right. And it's really the technology that's changing everything. It has, a, it has the ability to reach in and change multiple uh, industries. So um, I got into, um, initially I thought Riot was a blockchain stock, but okay. Riot is a mining okay. stock. But who knew, mm -hmm. right? It says blockchain in it. So I thought I was getting into a blockchain stock, but I did get into uh, IBM for their technology and blockchain also. They are using um, uh, some blockchain, um, that's the word I'm looking for. They're offering blockchain services through okay. IBM. Okay. Um, so IBM was one, it kind of dropped off, but got out, took profit, yeah. and I do want to get back in. And you said one more stock, right? Um, yeah, three total. So you have yeah. ESPO. Oh, and then for health thing is, 
Teladoc. Right? Teladoc, okay. Yeah. I like it. I think. Yeah. What are two sectors that you would say stay out of? Probably not the hottest ones right now. Maybe ones to avoid. <sighs> well, instantly they came out, but now I feel bad. Is I got out of the oil, right? Everybody got out of oil, but I didn't do enough research on oil to realize that oil's not going anywhere, right? So mm -hmm. we made, even though it's this massive move to EV, oil is still going to be around because it's used for so many other things besides just gas. Yeah. Right. So uh, I don't think I'm jumping back in oil yet, right? Sure. But um, I think when the travel industry opens back up, I think then that might be a time to get back in. But like you were saying, you know, there's uh, money in the market moves different times of the year, depending yeah, on the sector, depending on what's going on. Um, normally I would have said, I, so I haven't been in retail, yeah. right? so oil and retail are the ones that I, I'm not in right now. I would say that's not, <laughs> not a bad play, not a bad play. Yeah. I mean, you can trade anything. If it, has a, if it has a chart, it has a heart. Yeah. So you can get anything, but specifically those two industries have been pretty beat up over the last two years. So, and you know, technology and health yeah. have been going yeah. up. Yeah. So I get it. All right, man. Last question. Favorite movie. Whoa. I, we did this on the, the stock market meetup and I was <laughs> I didn't come up with my real favorite movie until after it was all over and yeah. now here you are asking me with this question again yeah <sighs> give me a second let me let me let me <laughs> let me let me think because instantly it would have been the toy right but that was a movie when I was uh, something that I, that I liked something Forever, that I watched yeah. with my older son yeah, yeah. um Ah, the toy. There's so many, man. There's so many. All your films. But when you're saying meetup, so you you actually host virtual meetups. Yeah, you're the gonna stock do, market. And you're going to be doing one tomorrow, tomorrow as well. Yep. But you're hosting a virtual meetup for people in what city? DC. So go to reallifetrading.com, scroll down to the event section. You'll probably find this guy doing a meetup for any traders in the DC area who are just interested about talking about the stock market. Yeah. Right, interest, non-interest, what's exciting, what's not exciting, what's going good, bad, ugly, and different. Yep, yep. Trying to help out uh, everyone with any type of knowledge. So novice, expert, totally green to it. It's just an open, unformal conversation. Yeah. Just talking about anything. Yeah, totally. Back to that movie, that movie, uh, Harlem Nights. Okay, it's a good one. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> All right, right on, man. Yeah. Well, friends and family from around the world, that was a sit down with Gregory Gilbert, one of my truest friends and just an amazing human being, a great trader, a great Thank husband. You. Thank you. So I've heard, Thank you. great father, and uh, man, a leader in your community and someone who's gonna be inspiring millions of people in your lifetime. I'm That's very the goal. excited to call you a friend, man. That's cool, me, me too, man. Thank you. My pleasure. Guys, look up to this guy, follow him on Facebook, get after him on all socials, and uh, let's keep enriching the world together. You guys rock.